Hi, I'm Tony Velasquez and welcome to Future Perfect Tech Shorts. For a time, my alma mater, UP or the University of the Philippines, was known among its students as the University of Pila. I know that even for the bola bola. Because of the long lines that form during enrollment or any other transaction with the university. But that could soon become a thing of the past with EUP, a university-wide project which aims for an integrated, interconnected, and harmonized UP. EUP involves a massive information exchange within and among its 14 campuses nationwide. UP also hopes to modernize many of its services from getting diplomas or transcripts to accessing journals online. And joining us on Future Perfect is UP President Dr. Alfredo Pascual to tell us more about the origins and the workings of EUP. Dr. Pascual, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for inviting me. This project had taken, what, years uh, in conceptualization? No, you know, I uh, was nominated to be president in uh, late 2010. Yep. That's when I uh, reflected this uh, idea of uh, trying to do a quantum leap in the technological infrastructure of UP for teaching and research. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, when I got elected and uh, I took over the reins in February 2011, I reiterated you know, the need to uh, really improve the ICT infrastructure of UP. Yeah. Now, we were just talking about uh, registration for students. Mm -hmm. so obviously, that's not the only thing EUP uh, will try to improve uh, yes. in terms of e efficiency. But what were you really targeting as the um, objectives for this project? Yeah, the, the registration part is, uh, I would say, a small uh, segment of this uh, whole project. Mm. My uh, objective is to be able to simplify and harmonize operations so we can achieve uh, some savings, you know, yeah. uh, to uh, increase efficiency so we can do things mm. faster, to uh, increase productivity so we can do more with uh, less people or with the same people we have as we yeah. expand, and to improve uh, sharing of information, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to achieve more working together. Okay. Now, give me a practical example, uh, Dr. Pascual, of how EUP can help in the information exchange uh, between the different colleges inside the UP Diliman campus and even in the other campuses around the country. Okay. With the, well, the key is in having a modernized infrastructure, you know, mm. uh, broader bandwidth, you know. Okay. And, and with that, you know, uh, communication between campuses can be done uh, very efficiently. Uh, unlike now, you know, there, I have seen this, you know, you're talking to somebody and then there is a failure in the video, eventually failure in the, in the audio. That's true. So mm. we hope to be able to solve this. Some of the meetings you're having. Teleconferencing? Teleconferencing will mm. be a mode that we will introduce. Sure. Right now, it's so expensive. We have, we have campuses, sure. campuses uh, cr uh, across the country. We have to bring the heads of these campuses to Manila every time yeah. we have to meet. You know, mm. so this is a clear source of uh, efficiency. You know, they don't have to lose time commuting, yeah. and we can save on the transport cost. Mm. Uh, it also impacts on the way um, UP has to procure its supplies. Uh, does EUP yes. also address one of those objectives? Yes, we have, will have a system that will take care of procurement. Mm -hmm. Right now, individual campuses procure separate uh, quantities of the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. Now with EUP, we can coordinate the procurement and we can do bulk procurement with uh, delivery being done on a decentralized fashion. You know? Yeah. And does that also include the bidding for the supplies? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. when, when uh, a bulk purchase is done, you know, uh, there could be more intensive bidding, you know, yeah. because uh, bigger suppliers can, can be brought in mm -hmm. to compete. Now let's talk about the infrastructure that goes into setting up the EUP system. Obviously, mm -hmm. you need some uh, help from telecommunications yes. companies. You also have private partners uh, who help set up the EUP project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The main project, of course, is uh, UP funded, and we're partnering with the government with its what, what's called PREGINET. Ah, uh, PREGINET, yes. System. That's still alive. Okay. Yes, it is, and uh, <laughs> it's being enhanced. Okay. So we'll ride on the backbone of uh, PREGINET. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, in the individual campuses, and also in, in, in terms of interconnecting uh, the campuses, mm -hmm. we are partnering with SMART. All right. you know, initially, mm -hmm. you know, we're open to partnership with uh, everybody mm -hmm. and they will provide us 
what they call industrial strength, broadband connectivity. Great. Mm -hmm. so, so you're actually getting uh, um, higher bandwidth than what's uh, provided to other enterprises? No, uh, what's provided to their industrial clients, industrial yeah, their, clients. Their, the enterprise mm -hmm. clients. Okay, I thought mm -hmm. you were going to get uh, like a special bandwidth allocation for UP. Well, we might be able to deal that later on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what is the cost to UP uh, when it undertook this project? It's a five-year uh, rollout. The uh, overall tag price uh, right now, excluding the donated services, is $750 million. Mm -hmm. But uh, a bulk of that will go into hardware and uh, connectivity. You know? oh, okay. The $750 million is sourced from the Different. budget? The budget of, of UP or from? Partly budget, partly from uh, funds we have generated from our own uh, sources, mm -hmm. partly from uh, CHED, you know, that had uh, some money allocated to it for computerization, All right. partly from donation. Now, um, maybe a, a typical student would want to know mm -hmm. if there's an EUP system in place, how does it benefit him? Uh, say for the student's point of view, what can he expect as a better or efficient service? Well. Mm -hmm. A number of things, you know. A student that needs financial assistance will be able to know exactly, you know, the kind of financial assistance he or she would get even before she comes to the campus to enroll, you know. Okay. Because that will be uh, done, uh, you know, with uh, the help of uh, computers and uh, mm -hmm. made known online. Mm -hmm. uh, when he comes to, he doesn't even have to come to enroll, you know, because enrollment can be it done, can be done uh, online. online. It, it's been done online for... Oh, yeah, it's being done online For now. like more than a decade. Yes, ago, yes. Right? Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, in the allocation, there's always a scramble for, for uh, class cards, you know, <laughs> or for a, for a seat <laughs> in a particular changed. class. We, mm -hmm. we hope to be able to optimize, you know, yeah. the allocation of class uh, resources, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So, and then, uh, of course, uh, getting the grades, you know, can be can yeah. be done uh, online, online. And, and it's being done so now, but we, we hope to be able to solve some of the bugs. So, so that means you don't have to have your class cards mailed to your house and let your parents know that you have a DQ or a 5, right? <laughs> 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 I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> but what about other things that the student might need? I mean, we're obviously talking about yeah. the other documents that he that have to Transcript, process. for example, mm -hmm. after graduation, you know. Yeah. There's a, it's a long wait, you know, yes. uh, typically, mm. especially when you're getting your transcript at the peak period, right mm. after, after graduation, graduation, you know. Mm. We hope to be able to provide same day service, you know. Great, oh, so. great. So it's in a way like uh, the, um, the NSO service, oh, where you can actually like have your documents processed online yes. and delivered to you. Yes, yes. That, but the more important thing, thing yeah. for the university, it will make it also very easy yeah. for our graduates, our alumni to donate to UP. <laughs> okay, that's the key point there. <laughs> Please keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> but um, eventually, because the project uh, has just recently been launched, yes, um, and it means that uh, you're looking at um, sort of like evolving the project mm -hmm. over several years. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see uh, EUP become okay. uh, during your term? Yeah, the initial uh, objective is to improve efficiency mm. and to achieve operational excellence. Mm. But uh, we're doing this not so much for operational efficiency by itself or for itself, but really to push our academic uh, achievements and our academic excellence. So over time, I'd like to be able to use the ICT infrastructure mm -hmm. to support education, meaning our teaching uh, operations, activities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and support the research activities of our faculty. Ah, okay. And when you're talking about uh, information exchange among the different uh, uh, um, uh, colleges or mm -hmm. campuses mm -hmm. uh, in UP and you're talking about the research, are you talking about like a central database that everything can be mm -hmm. um, researched for in that database as long as you have authorized access to it? Number? That, that's one. Uh, online access to library resources, yeah. research. Uh, Is it open to anybody? No, it's open only to those who, have, who are authorized, you know, like enrolled students, faculty. Okay. So you have to log in and register? Yes, yes. And it's one log in for all the resources, you okay. know, including personal information. But, but the more important thing, it, we'd like to be able to make the teaching resources of UP available to other universities, you know, oh. to a better 
communications infrastructure. I see. So it's not just for UP, it's but also just sharing with other educational Definitely, institutions. Definitely, you know, because uh, we are mandated by our charter to perform our unique and distinctive leadership in higher education yeah. and development. And we'd like to be able to do that mm -hmm. very efficiently and effectively mm -hmm. with ICT, with EUP. You know, Dr. Pascual, I've got to tell you, since I graduated from the UP in, never mind, let me not say the date, <laughs> we, we actually had, um, you know, no um, portable computers back then. We were mm -hmm. actually using punch cards when mm -hmm. we were learning how to do basic COBOL programming, which I loathed. <laughs> Not really. But, I mean, how does it help students now who are more computer savvy when they have an EUP system to work with? I think introducing EUP, you know, will expose our students to the more sophisticated uh, way of doing, the, the going through the learning process, you know, and, and uh, uh, in such a way that when they get out of the university and get to work in uh, sophisticated companies, you know, they will mm. feel very much at ease, you know. Mm. Uh, will classrooms actually be linked to EUP? Eventually, yes. Uh -huh. we'd, uh, we'd like to be able to incorporate e-learning, you know, yeah. in our curriculum. Mm. We'd like to be able to increase the productivity of, of our faculty by being able to manage a bigger number of students, you know, uh, through the use of uh, e-learning, you know, yeah, yeah. where uh, assignments and, uh, and, uh, and uh, interactions are, are done without, even without the presence of the faculty, you know. Uh, now, so final question, because we just uh, really have a, a, a short period of time. A lot of documents obviously are probably archived in UP. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, since 1908? 1908, yeah. yes, yes. And how do you digitize all of that? Is there a program that's ongoing to do that now? No, no, the digitization is ongoing. It's ongoing? Yeah, we how have a certain software. How long is the backlog software. for, for, for that? Well, of course, we're starting with the recent past, you know, Okay. and so trying to go farther out yeah. into the past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But well, I we can hope imagine like the UP library would mm -hmm. have to be computerized by now, is it? Yes, yes. You don't have to go through index cards? Car index cards anymore, you know, to locate a book. Or, or hang out in one of the kiosks yeah. while they check out your book. Yeah, no, uh, much has been achieved, you know, in terms of uh, <laughs> computerization in UP. But there's, mm. there's a lot more to be done, you know. Yeah. Remember that uh, technology is moving very fast, you know. So it is. And we have to catch up. The recent Apple event just reminded mm. us of that. Yes. So anyway, Dr. Pasqual, it was a pleasure to have you on Future Perfect. Thank and you for giving uh, us the chance to explain as a, UP. As an alumnus of UP, I'm actually proud to see that my alma mater is moving into the digital age, <laughs> finally. So yes. good luck and Thank congratulations you. to everybody who worked on the project. Thank you very much. And when we return, we seek out new products at the Hong Kong Electronics Fair and the iPad Mini joins the Great Tablet Wars of 2012. Stay tuned, you're watching Future Perfect Tech Shorts. <laughs>